Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are on day six of their first royal tour as a married couple. Yesterday they received an enthusiastic welcome at the delayed opening ceremony of the fourth Invictus Games, Harry's flagship sporting event for injured or sick army veterans. Today the newlyweds, who are expecting their first child, were expected to attend the first day of the Invictus Games competition, created by the Duke of Sussex in which more than 500 competitors from 18 countries will compete. But only Prince Harry will make an appearance at the official planned engagements as Kensington Palace have said Meghan's schedule has been cut back following a busy program. Highlights from today's events include road cycling time trials, which kick off at 9.30 am local time, 12.30 am BST. The cycling will be followed by the sailing at 11 am local time. 1 a.m. BST. The final major event of the day will be the Road Cycling Criterium, at 1.30 p.m. local time, 3.30 a.m. BST. The Duke of Sussex has arrived at the Botanic Gardens in Sydney to meet Invictus competitors and staff. He has not been joined by Meghan as her schedule has been cut back following a busy program. Kensington Palace said, after a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. Cindy Harbour provides a spectacular backdrop for the Invictus Games debut of sailing. Boats will sail from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia at Rushcutters Bay to Farm Cove. Meghan and Harry are expected to be watching the event as it makes it Invictus Games debut. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will be at Royal Botanic Gardens to cheer on the Invictus Cindy in cycling. The parents-to-be will then enjoy a slap-up lunch with the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. Invictus family and friends will also join the special luncheon. Harry and Meghan will then watch the sailing competition, which kicks off at 1 a.m. BST. They will then attend a private Invictus Games reception at Governor House. Twitter user Nick Steiner penned, adding Victus Games, so inspiring and emotional. And good to show the kids what real grit looks like. We're in awe. Another said, Gary Robinson smashing it at the Invictus Games. Meanwhile, Aussie politician Gladys Berejiklian wrote, at the Royal Botanic Gardens to watch the start of the Invictus Games cycling. All the best to all of the amazing athletes competing. You are an inspiration. Prince Harry launched the event with a very personal speech at the Sydney Opera House forecourt. The father-to-be gushed about the couple's exciting baby news, which was announced hours after he and wife Meghan landed in Australia earlier in the week. He said to huge applause, I have been so proud to be able to introduce my wife to you and we have been so happy to be able to celebrate the personal joy of our newest addition with you all. The Games is the biggest highlight of the Royal Tour for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The excitement of the tour has been added to by the news of Meghan's pregnancy as eager royal fans begin to notice traces of a baby bump. Prince Harry and wife Meghan will begin the first day of the Invictus Games Cindy by attending the cycling competition at the Royal Botanic Garden. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will watch one of the road bike time trials before meeting competitors and team staff in the competition hub. The Royal Couple will also present the gold, silver and bronze medals at the event. After the cycling, the pair will head to the pavilion for the official reception hosted by Prime Minister Scott Morrison. There they will meet representatives from veteran support groups and mental well-being organizations. Later in the afternoon, the Duke and Duchess will watch the Invictus Games sailing final from a family and friends boat in Farm Cove. Tonight, the couple will attend a private reception for the Invictus Games Foundation at Government House. The event tests speed and skill as key strengths come to the fore on the picturesque Royal Botanic Garden course where cyclists try to beat the clock and each other. Fans in the crowd are waving Union Jack flags as the competitors fly past. Harry and Meghan are expected to join the onlookers in spurring the challengers on. Moments after Prince Harry helped raise the iconic Invictus Games flag on the top of Cindy Harbour Bridge, he comforted a serviceman's widow who joined him on the climb. Gwen Churn, 41, who was one of the select group scaling the bridge with the prince, 
shared how a sympathetic Harry listened to the story of her late husband, Australian Special Forces officer Peter J. Cafe, who died by suicide in February 2017 at the age of 48. The pair spoke for nearly 10 minutes on the descent and the prince asked about her children, Emily, 6, Lachlan, 3, and stepson Tom, 19, and how the family was coping. Lachlan is the spitting image of my husband. Harry said something like the children must remind you of him, or live on in him. And I said my son is so much like him, Churn, who grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, tells people. It was comfortable and thoughtful. Churn says Harry, who lost his mother, Princess Diana, when he was just 12, and her spoke about grief and loss. He understood what I meant. When you understand loss, I think it's obvious, she explained. He did ask me if I was getting the support I need from the defense and ex-servicemen and veteran community. She works closely with U.S.-based Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors and talked to Harry about their partnership with the UK's Diana Award. Harry, who is touring Australia with pregnant wife Meghan Markle, 37, was on the bridge to help herald the start of his Paralympic-style contest for wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women and veterans which starts in Cindy this weekend. As the 34-year-old prince's entourage tried to move them along from the outing, Harry wanted to ensure they had enough time to talk. He stopped and said, I'm in the middle of a conversation, and I'm not going to leave this. We were talking about my story and mental health and how difficult it is still, in our society, to talk about grief and loss and suicide. And how important things like the Invictus Games are to shedding light on and allowing people to start to have these conversations that are great to have. Churn, who is an advisor for widows, veterans and families for the Australian Department of Veterans Affairs and an Invictus Games Ambassador 2018, adds that grief is the basis of so much suffering. We are not dealing with the daily losses we have or the major losses of a husband or a son. Heaven forbid we actually talk about suicide and the real causes of it and that it is more complicated than just one issue on one day. She added, the fact that he and Meghan are shining their light on the Invictus Games, highlighting for so many people the service and sacrifices the serving members and their families, and highlighting their families, gives people hope. Harry asked quite a few questions about my story, so he had it correct in his head, she says. Churn met Peter, known as Pete when she was working in development in Afghanistan in 2008. He re-enlisted in the Australian Army in 2010, joining the Special Forces, 2nd Commando Regiment, in 2012. She moved to Australia, giving birth to Emily while he was on deployment to Afghanistan in 2012. Then four years later, while deployed in Iraq in first half of 2016 he suffered a stroke. He had shown signs of PTSD, anxiety and paranoia during our entire relationship. But after the stroke his cognition was not improving as quickly as he would have liked it to. The only sign was that he wasn't processing things as quickly, and he had a small black spot in his eyesight, she explains. When you're in a high-performing environment, like the special forces, when you're not performing at your highest, you can tell that, Chern said. That created a lot of anxiety and pressure for him. He started losing thoughts. He didn't believe defense had his best interests at heart, even though they were telling him everything to the contrary. And he became really angry and violent on the Friday and then on the Monday morning he died by suicide in our garage. Me being involved in the Invictus Games has actually got me out of bed. I gain resilience, churn shares. I don't have to climb a mountain today but just put one foot in front of the other. She says Harry and Meghan are doing so much good with their place in the world, using their power and their privilege. Many of our leaders could learn from that. They are changing people's lives because of it. They are changing the way we are looking at mental health globally because they care, they are paying attention to it, and flying that Invictus Games. That is changing, and saving, lives every single day. Yeah.